Mr. Ed here. Today is August 1st, 2020. I'm in Lacombe, Louisiana. Man, we got Good Time Charlie and Wreck-It Ralph. In fact, go ahead, Charlie. Show where Wreck-It Ralph is. That's right. Way Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> so Ralph is upstairs where we're going to be doing the bees. Now, Ralph is only here as a spectator today because on, on Monday, Ralph had rotator cuff surgery. So he's here to advise me how to do the cuts, make sure I'm doing it right. And Charlie's here to make sure that, that I give him good directions on where do we, how we video this video. But the video today is gonna to be about removing bees between the floor, in between the floor joist space. And very typically, the bees will find a spot where the siding and the brick don't meet up and they're able to access that area of the floor joist. So generally, when your walls come down, they'll meet with the outside brick, but this one, for some reason, the floor space upstairs extends over the brick and that was what enabled the bees to find a space where they could get into and over and into that floor joist space. The bees haven't been in there too long, judging from what the FLIR has uh, shown us but and then the space itself is probably only about a foot and a half so hopefully we, we don't have a lot of comb now typically I'm not going to do a removal of bees at this time of year because one it's too hot for me but really primarily is is because we're not in a nectar flow and I like to to work our cutouts in timing with the flow whether we're in just beginning it whether we're ending it right in the center of it or towards the end of it. but to be have a flow because one this is very stressful it's very stressful on the bees to remove them at, um, to begin with and so having a nectar flow kind of really does help the bees get back into starting up again and being able to continue on but with, when you're in a in a dearth like we are right now whatever is the bees have in their hive that's all they're going to get but the problem with that is that because we're in the dirt and you have to give them their honey, the problem is that we're also in the peak of beetle season. And any comb that is wet with honey is going to attract beetles. Now also too, it's been theorized that during the process of removals, this stress that the bees endure emits pheromone and it's been theorized that this pheromone that the bees emit the stress pheromone also the beetles pick up on that and so they're more prone to attack to attack these hives one they're weakened from the the removal and two they're in a state of chaos almost uh, trying to get reoriented and so they become very very susceptible to the attack of the hive beetles so I don't know what's going to happen with how the comb is going to come out of here, whether we're going to be able to use any of it or some of it or whatever, but we'll find that out as we go. But I'm always very hesitant to do removals at this time of year because the survivability rate of these hives at this time of year is pretty slim. However, you always have circumstances which this is. Um, this home was, was purchased to be renovated and, and then flipped. And so the, the, the person who bought the home, they contacted me and they, they're on a three week, three week, four week schedule. And so we're here to remove the bees um, so that they, they can at least be, have given a chance to be survived. So by the grace of God, something will good happen with these bees and we'll get them up to the Abbey and they'll make it. So before I go, I'm gonna go ahead and show you where the bees are entering into the house. And then we'll go upstairs, show you the flare where we marked out where the bees are and we'll get this thing going. Let's wrangle, huh? The way they did this second floor, it's not typical or either that or the walls weren't square because if you track this wall, you can see it tapers. It tapers at this end, it flares out at this end, and then tapers back. So one of these walls is out or something's not exactly right so this is how they fixed it with just allowing that top floor to overlap this brick wall and in overlapping it 
it gave the bees, it looks like uh, either a weep hole or a joint where the bees were able to get through that and into the floor space. So there they are. And I'm glad that we get to do this upstairs because it's really hot and it's air conditioned up there. And I really wouldn't want to be working on a ladder up that high. So let's go inside and see where the bees are located in the floor and uh, proceed from there. Since Ralph is a, a limited capacity, show Ralph, show Ralph, where you get the picture, Ralph? Yeah, see, poor Ralph, he's all busted up. But he wanted to come wrangling with us because it's been like six weeks since we Got did anything together. So while Charlie and I were downstairs shooting that intro, Ralph was upstairs doing this hard labor of installing our, our handles on the floor. We can handle that part. But he also did the layout of where our bees are. So our bees are in this section, and I don't know if the camera's picking up, but we've already, Ralph has already marked out the, the section of, of floor space that the bees are in. And he installed the handles. So all I'm gonna do is cut this section out right here, and hopefully we'll be able to lift the whole entire hive up and set it on our saw horses and then proceed to vacuum and maybe even find our queen, huh? So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the floor. Ralph would normally do this, but since he's incapacitated, looks like it's up to me because Charlie don't wanna do it, so I'll, I'll be the guy doing this. I have to do the camera. <laughs> You're right, Charlie, you got a job. Now Ralph was back there coaching me the whole way on how to cut this thing out and uh, and then Charlie was chiming in with his two cents as well. <laughs> but I think between the three of us and the incapacitated Ralph, I believe this piece of wood is now ready to come out the floor. So let's um, see what we're looking like. Huh? <laughs> How about that, folks? Nice, nice comb. Able to get most of it out with the one pull. Really nice. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm looking for my queen right now. So we got most of it out, like I said, and my suspicion is our queen is going to be here, being that we have so many bees at this point. But we did get a little bit of comb left inside the floor space and this is where I'm going to start right here um, because I want to clean this up first make sure our queen isn't in here since I know she's not going anywhere on her comb we'll get this stuff done first and then we'll go ahead and work on our main section of comb but for the most part the, the entire hive came out very nice very nice first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pick up the comb that broke off and I'm going to just set it up onto our comb just rejoin these bees with, with the other ones I want to make sure our queen's not on this section right here she's not the rest looks like I can vacuum out there's 
just this, looks like there's only one piece here and then a couple of pieces that broke off from the main section because they had built underneath the floor space right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start vacuuming these bees up. Once we get these vacuumed up, cut that comb out of there and then we'll start on to the main section of the hive. About a half an hour, we got all the comb, and it's still little pieces, but the comb is cut out. I'm going to leave those pieces in there right there for any of the bees to, when they come in, they'll go to that comb. And when I finish coming back and cutting all this out, we'll get those bees at that point. But I was concerned about bees being in between the stud and the brick, but there's nothing in there. Very, very good. And if you look, all the way to the back. I don't know if the camera's, there's no light, but there was lots of bees back here, but they've all migrated up to the front. We work on the main section of the comb now and start work over there. We got the hive situated where hopefully you'll be able to, to see pretty much what I'm doing as I dissect it, take it apart. And, and I'll work from this end back It'll give the bees, they're going to start to run away from me as I start pushing, cutting comb this way. So they're going to want to run that way. But as they run that way, I've got a big open space behind me. So Ralph's got his eagle eyes. Charlie's got his, well, not so good eyes. And I've got my eyes looking. And so if our queen does make her way over there, I think we should be able to spot her. But my, my suspicion, she's going to stay on the comb. Uh, I looked in the window already, and their, their actions, they, it's not indicative of her being up there. There's no grouping, clustering. So these bees, as you can see, look how calm these bees are. It's amazing. Even when we were cutting the floor, you're, I'm used to having bees come out as we cut it just from the vibration of the wood. These bees, they're just so mellow and nice. So, um, yeah, even I took off my hood, you know. So you know they got to be nice if I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start vacuuming the bees and then remove the comb, save the comb, and just move our way back, 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 and you'll see the bees are going to run that way. You'll see that. All right, let's start vacuuming.
Look at that, folks. Eagle Eye Ralph, like I told you, Eagle Eye Ralph. He got the uh, the one on that cutout we were doing up in Covington a couple weeks ago, and Ralph spotted this one as well. So thank you, Jesus, for that. It'll make things go a lot faster now. I don't have to be so concentrating on the bees. I can just really vacuum bees and cut the comb. So let's go ahead and finish cutting out this comb and getting these bees into bee vac, huh? Woo! Good job, Ralph. <laughs> Uh, you can see our comb very very dry I, I'm gonna be able to use a lot of this comb in here probably all of it as much as I can but uh, our queen th these bees have issues and I'll talk about those in a little while but we got all our comb is cut out and I'm gonna focus our attention now on backing these bees uh, in, in the window getting those things vacuumed up but we're almost done Well, folks, <laughs> it ain't there no more. No more in the floor. No more on the section of plywood we pulled out. Just a handful in the window. And Ralph cleaning up. <laughs> well, we got all the bees vacuumed up. Man, this, this really turned out to be a, a really nice job. I, I do have my concerns about these bees. Our queen, when, when I first saw her, she's not, her abdomen is not really swollen up really good, so it, you know, it indicates she's not laying, um, but it is, it is getting larger, I see right now. But as we, were, as we were going through all that comb, that there was like no, there was no brood in there whatsoever as far as new brood. There was some old brood and it's very spotty. I suspect that this is this is a, a new queen. I do think she's made it though, I really do, and that she just still hasn't started laying yet. But I'm, uh, there was very little stores um, in the hive as well. The, uh, um, you, would, you would think at this time of year that there would be a, a really a lot of honey in there. And there was some, but not much. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna wind up feeding these bees as well as monitoring to see 
um, how our queen is if she starts laying. And she, she didn't act like a typical virgin queen. Because a virgin queen, they're very nervous. They, they run around and they just act nervous. And this queen, she's kind of pretty, not lethargic, but she's calm. She's a calm queen. But then again, so are these bees. But my suspicion is this is not the, the queen that made all these bees. That This is, this is a, a, a queen that's been superseded. We did find one cup in the hive as we were taking apart. So hey, that's just my suspicion. But like I say, I'm just guessing at that. But we're going to find out in the next couple of weeks. So we're going to go ahead and load the bees up. The rest of the band's loaded up. We're going to load the bees up and we'll close this video out. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, what do you think, Charlie, bro? It was an easy one. It was quite a day. Aside all the abuse, the verbal abuse that Ralph and I had to take from him, it was a great day. We got to work in the air conditioning. Yeah, that's normal. The abuse for me, that's a normal part of a, a cutout. But uh, other than that, I think, every, I mean, this really was a straightforward, was. easy job. You know, Eagle Eye Ralph spotting that queen. and I mean, right away. So, you got anything to say, Charlie? Well, thanks for watching. Keep, Keep on watching. On. We'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, Charlie, Ralph, we're out into the next video. See you later. Good, guys. Good, good. This is the worst part of the whole job. This is the cleanup. Well, this was a really clean job. Very little honey. This was very good. Uh, very little honey. And we were working in air condition. That was the great part. I mean, get a load of this. Get a load of this guy, man. He needs, yeah. He's, oh, look at him go. He's getting that water out of it. Well, I, I, I just got introduced to Bridget, and that's the, the wife of the homeowner. And when I was looking at her, I saw the shirt she's wearing. Check out this shirt. BB! <laughs> That's what the grandkids call her. But That's pretty good, huh? That's delicious. Hey. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, man, is that good. Come on, Miss BB. Come on, get in there, Bridget. Gotta come get you a piece. Oh, man, oh, you got to eat some of that. You got to taste it. Might have this one fell out on there. Now tell me how good that is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> You should have been your head, Charlie. That's good. That's good. That's amazing. Isn't it nice? That came out of your floor. That came out of your floor.